in my late teens through my 20s, I couldn't keep musicians because they 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 couldn't move as fast mm. as me. I hey, I, I know just the found feeling. this record for a buck at a whatever. I've listened to it and now I want to I want to add this to the sound. I want to mm -hmm. and it was continuously like change my my I was adding but I had to do it. I had to add it pretty heavily into my sound for a while. Like if I heard gotcha. the first time I heard Funkadelic, I'm like, "Wait, wait, wait." You know, like, okay, we got to start doing this. Like, we got we got to <laughs> add this. And some people wouldn't get down with it, you know. Aloha. Hey, it's Nick from the All-American Rejects and you're listening to Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio. Hi, this is Terry Draper from CLA2. Hey, what's up? This is Thomas Ian Nicholas of Rookie of the Year, American Pie. Hi, this is Tino Troy from Praying Mantis. Hey, this is Kirk from Power Pop Overdose. Hey, this is Dwayne Bad. Mason and Paul. And you're listening to Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio. So with your host, Final Man Jeb, right here on Mad Wash Radio. Let's just have a chat then, You're listening to Mad Wasp Radio. Ow! Hey everybody, this is your host, Vinyl Man Jeb of Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio podcast section. Today's podcast is with Tony Reed of Moss Generator. Now, what a cool band. Metal from the Seattle side. Tune in here. Tony Reed talks about everything, Tony Reed, all his different projects. Let's get right into it. Hey everybody, this is your host, Vinyl Man Jeb of Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio podcast section. Uh, here with Tony Reed of Moss Generator, one of the coolest bands I've come to discover as of recent from their album for Future Gods, was one of the, my favorite albums of theirs. But we're going to get into more about their newest release and some other albums as well. And Tony's here with us. Hi, Tony. How you doing? Good. I'm, I'm excited to have you. I think I reached out to you a couple months before and this timing issue and back and forth and we finally got you. So excited to have you yeah, on God. and we're, we're here now. I'm going to start off the interview like I do with everybody else. But uh, what got you into music? Um, I would have to say my parents, first and foremost, that was they listened to what, what I would consider really cool music. And so that was around the house all the time. And and then, you know, as you do, you branch off onto your own your own thing and then you know through other like i had uh, cousins that were were older than me that would introduce me to you know what was going on at th that point in time when i really started to get interested in music which was up when i was about six or seven years old is when i started collecting records and uh and then from there i think i was nine when i heard kiss Ooh. the first time and then that then it just went you know I, I went bonkers. I, I wanted to play music, play it after that. And that's where kind of the the passion started. I didn't really get started playing till I was 12 or 13. I, I didn't have a guitar. So um, when I got a guitar, it went, that was it. Was the guitar your first instrument? Or I know some of our guests have yeah, really switched between. So I, I, it was drums and guitar at about ah, the same cool. time. And I've, I've made a, a, a decent career out of, playing you know lots of instruments I, I just anything i picked up i would mess with it for a year you know i've been messing with these instruments trying to to get you know good at them for years so um it was anything i could get my hands on perfect and you mentioned a record collection any prized uh possession records i have a record collection as well too i got a few that i could always name off the top of my head but uh any ones that you're like yeah i'm glad i have this on vinyl <laughs> Well, there's there. I mean, some of them because uh, when people talk about this, they talk about things that are worth a lot of money, and that's not necessarily where I come from. I mm. mean, there's a couple of big star records. There that, you go. Original pressing, ardent big star records oh, that wow. I'm like, you know, I've got like a promo of Radio City wow. original pressing. And I'm trying to get a promo of, of number one record off my friend. Uh, and, and he's he's you know in his 70s now he's much older than me he turned me on to a lot of music when i was young mm -hmm. he's i know he has that record hanging around i bug him all the time for it. <laughs> but then there's stuff like you know i mean this isn't this is a weird story but the the day i lost my virginity <laughs> i i was done and the girl said do you want this alice cooper welcome to my nightmare or do you want this first black sabbath record so i was getting like a prize or something <laughs> So I took I took the first Sabbath record. You know, I was 13 years there old. There you go. I've had that record ever since, and it sits, you know, in a in a nice, you know, a, a nice place for me. There it's, you go. It, it's it was trashed when I got it, and then I wore it out even more. And then, of course, it's you know I've replaced it many times, 
but it sits there as a as a as a prized possession just because of the what it yeah the sentimental represents. value versus you know the value value i like that i'm it, a huge it is a green big label fan. warner brothers oh wow it's a green label. so i mean that's that's cool too because the green label warner brothers of all the sabbath pressings through all the countries the the first pressing warner brothers are always my favorite they're the darkest they're the loudest you know they're, they're great the heaviest pressings yeah. oh yeah i have a few so, in I mean, my uh, bins too I, I love uh masters of reality oh one of my favorite sabbath yeah, albums of all time <laughs> that's and and the green label that's for sure the best sound one Ooh, i have awesome. one of those with the post the original poster Ooh. oh wow and, and ones that the original pressings the first first pressings the songs on the label had alternate titles like it would be like the haunting came after um after Children of the Grave, and there oh, was wow. another song called Death Mask, and there was one called Step Up, and they were they were to make the albums seem like they had more songs on them. They would get paid more. Interesting. I did not know they that. they had more oh, wow. songs on the record. So oh, wow. stuff like that. And it only came on the first Warner Brothers pressing. So stuff like that. I, well, that's you know, rare, too. That's awesome. Total, yeah, we could go into the record, record thing. You know, <laughs> and I, I just brought up Big Star because... Like I do have an uh, like a Chris Bell from Big Star. That's I have awesome. his uh, "I Am the Cosmos" forty five original Ooh. pressing that's signed oh, wow. by Alex Chilton, who sings backup vocals. I know I keep bringing up Big Star. Oh, there's, I love them. There's lots of oh, I love yeah, them. You're more than welcome to. Our we actually had John and Ken back when everything was different with the posies and everything going on on our show. Um, we're actually started our show started because of the posies, and we always oh, loved Big Star, big time. Yeah. Um, and John Howard is a them. friend of our show, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, they, they did such a great job in, in the reformation. I oh, saw yeah. them the first time they came around to Seattle. You know, I was probably like, you know, in early 2000s. Oh, I think. that's awesome. Oh. It was one of I saw them at the Showbox, and that was before the big. I mean, there was this, the Showbox in Seattle holds about 1,000 people, and there oh, was wow. about 250 people in there. Well, that's nice. So I was able wow. to stand right in front of Alex Chilton with <laughs> nobody touching me and watch him play all these songs. And this guy's, le- I mean, it Alex was, is it, legendary. It, it, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. And the tunes are just, they mean so much to me. Mm-hmm. And, and Ken and John did an amazing oh, job. Yeah. And so, yeah, just totally totally yeah, awesome. i actually uh, did september girls with uh, ken on stage during his solo run um i got to open like just real quick and then uh john and i became really close and then i became friends with uh, mike mershberger and uh, john hour uh you know john hour mike mershberger and dave fox later on and even arthur roberts the original bass player for dear 23 mm-hmm. and uh, arthur became actually a very good friend and be- formed a band with us online for a couple months and we did a couple songs together and those songs will be released real soon uh we're just in the backlog of the mastering side of it but it's uh, we're so excited Excellent. to get it finally out. And John's on that album, uh, Desolation Sound, which the band I mentioned before we started recording. They're on there uh, for fun. And, uh, you know, we like with our record label, we like to bring people together and, and do songs together, too, if people are interested, like a family type label thing. So it's very fun. Yeah. And they don't have to, but it's great when they do. And uh, just a cool scene that they have set up. And I've always loved the Seattle scene because I live in Connecticut where the scene here is it's much different. It is alive. But you have to find it. And then when you find it, it's like, I don't really fit in with it, so I'm going to move on. And it's either it's yeah. either hip hop or it's punk rock, and that's it. I haven't really found the folk rock side or the or the indie or the power pop you know side over here that much. Um, but it's happening. We just had Not A Surf play here, so I got to see them and meet Matthew Cause, which oh, was cool. awesome. And Matthew's a big friend of the show, so we uh, interviewed him as well. And so we, we're always keeping tabs on the Seattle side of things, even though I know uh, Matt is from uh, New York. But it's, it's cool to see that the KEXP right. picked them up. And uh, it's just such an interesting scene. So, of course, finding you guys was just fun because it was like, oh, Moss Generators in the Seattle area. Oh, wow. It's part of the scene that I love and I have on my wall. You know, I actually have a big star 45 behind me on my wall of uh, I forget which 45 this is. Oh, a feel. But it's the reissue from Rhino. It's the reissue gotcha. one. But I have it yeah. framed and everything. I- so. <laughs> Yeah, I managed to grab all those Ardent 45s oh, when I awesome. first discovered eBay in like the late 90s. <laughs> I could never find them on tour. Like, I would be out on tour in the mm-hmm. 90s trying to find any big star stuff. And once I hit eBay, I got them all for like two or three bucks a piece. Wow. Oh, I wow. Multiples and stuff. I'm <laughs> like, I've never seen these. I'm just going to buy them all up, you know? There you go. And, uh, but like, Connecticut, I think I played in Connecticut in 93. I was in a band called Tree People. Okay. And that, that was Doug Doug Marsh from Built to Spill was in Treepeat. Oh wow! Before, 
yeah, he, and then we we did some stuff, and then he left. He actually asked me to be in Built to Spill, and I was like, I don't want to move to Boise, man, because they were, you know, three people were from Seattle, and it's, um, and then he, you know, they made that. That's some great music, man. I was a fan before I joined. Oh, that's awesome. That's the so best it was feeling. Super cool to join. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. then there's like a respect, anyway, but also being a part of it too, which is awesome. So I and see, yeah, and you know, I'm 53, so I and. I saw all the bands. Oh, it's awesome! Back in the day, I saw a lot of stuff. Like I saw Nirvana in a Ooh. garage, playing on a skate ramp. It was my friend's garage. He was having a party <laughs> on Band of Five. You know, and we didn't know they didn't even. Ha- I think that Love Buzz had just came out the first single. I saw him a week later with Butthole Surfers. Oh, um, that's so awesome! That in '88, and oh. uh, and I never saw him again. <laughs> Yeah, I've been a big, like I said, I, I've, I've enjoyed listening to uh, Songs for Future Gods has been the what got me in to you guys. And I enjoyed that album okay. wholeheartedly. Uh, could we go into that? Talk about that album? I know it's, a yeah, way sure, back. Sure. Yeah. it's way back. It was very bizarre. And if you buy the vinyl of it, the there's, well, not the first issue. It's been reissued twice. Mm-hmm. It's been issued three times on oh, vinyl wow. on three different labels. The second and third issues have extensive liner notes. What guitar I used, what pedals, what oh, amp, wow. what day I recorded things, what <laughs> what day the bass was on, recorded on, you know. And uh, so, but the, that record was recorded twice. Oh, we wow. went into the studio first on in January of two thousand six, and we attempted to, we recorded all the drum tracks, and I got back to working on it because I record I mix record mix and master everything oh, all wow. of the records and uh that's my job it's been my job since the mid 90s i've owned my own studio and that's what oh, that's I awesome living. and so we i heard i after overdubbing everything i was like this this album doesn't have the energy that the tracks don't have the energy i was hoping for so we we shelved it for about uh, until november of 2006 which meant we could go out and play these songs. Some of them we couldn't play, but we could play the a, a majority of the songs live. We went back in and recorded it again and got the energy. Not, But not. I think I stifled it by being... Sometimes I would over... I'm a perfectionist, so I would overdo mm-hmm. it with that in, in the recording process and the performance processes. And uh, I, w- I, I believe that I, I staled that record you know what i mean i just controlled it so much that it made it not what we were even though it was effective and it does have a certain sound i've learned over the years how to leave mistakes or or what, how mm-hmm. energy means more than perfection you know we're working on a record right now actually i'm just Ooh. doing in the mastering process and and it turned out that energy over perfection was was the the full on Wow, I can't wait to hear this the, the, for the whole <laughs> album, you know. Oh, that's awesome! Um, we can't wait. But to... over the years, I've learned, I've learned, and then style's a lot different on on this record than it is on the other records. 
I'm adding more of my power pop feel. Ooh. It's not as guitar driven. It's way progressive. It's like a progressive rock 90s album. Ooh, so it's more okay. 80s and 90s underground meets progressive rock. So you might get like, you know, Husker Du and Ooh. meets meets King Crimson. Or you might get like, you know, there's electronic elements to it. Lots of synthesizers. All right, I'm hooked. Uh, so I'm ready might, now. Jeez, you know, <laughs> that's awesome. You might get like, so it doesn't have the same feel. As, and we've been moving towards that very slightly over the last few years, and I just went bonkers with it.
it's nice to throw more more of what I like into Moss Generator because I have other bands mm -hmm. that 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 like I have a, like a like I'm really into early Joe Walsh Ooh. solo stuff because it's this odd quirky power pop rock country. It's and that's I have another band that's like that. So we're an alt country southern rock power pop band so a little bit like wilco really? on that sense or uh i get I, yeah. you know and i wouldn't know because i've never heard oh, that. okay i just take from the stuff that i grew up listening to awesome okay so it's like to me it's like you know neil young big star mm. and then like leonard skinner and leon russell oh so okay. it would be like, like that, that is oh wow like. okay you know, and that one where we just our second record just came out, and our third one we started recording. What's the name of that project? So, Hot Spring Water. Waltz around the changes. Times until you leave behind. 
that youthful life. Tony, I wanted to also ask about Hot Spring Water, Waltz Around the Changes, the newest album. Uh, tell me about that one. Uh, it's a, a live session that we did at a local music store to, to promote, you know, just what they were doing a, a, every couple of weeks, having an artist come in and doing a really nice job at filming and, and, oh, wow. and recording. So uh, once we got done with that, uh, we found a label out of San Diego, Glory or Death. They're going to uh, release it, but uh, it's a it's a feature in our live set all the time. It's it's kind of more we're turning more to a country rock type of thing. This is like a southern country rock thing. Some nice harmony leads and you know that that kind of thing uh, and a nice outro lead. It's awesome, super fun band to play in. Yeah. And then we're going to move into one of your solo songs, uh, Funeral Suit. Tell me about that one. We're also going to link the video down below, guys, for you. So tell me about that one. Uh, that's, well, the title track to uh, acoustic album I did a few years back, Ripple, Ripple Music. Started doing an acoustic series, and they asked me to be second in line on the Ooh. series. And so I, I put together a bunch of it, so, you know, songs, and uh, this is the title track. It has features a really nice Mellotron, some really nice Mellotron mm -hmm, parts. It starts with a baritone electric that's mic'd, so it's a weird sound, wow. and then it, it goes into the Mellotron solo, and then it slowly fades into a, 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 a standard tuning, uh, uh, an acoustic. So it's a really weird process throughout the song, but it, so, uh, it's a nice tune. Yeah, I dig it. It's a, you know, everybody's got to go through death from time to time and probably are going to need a funeral suit from here you yeah. know from at some point Change 
my late teens through my 20s, I couldn't keep musicians because they 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 couldn't move as fast. Mm. I hey, I, I just found feeling. this record for a buck at a whatever. I've listened to it, and now I want to I want to add this to the sound. I want to, mm -hmm. and it was continuously like change my my. I was adding, but I had to do it. I had to add it pretty heavily into my sound for a while. Like if I heard gotcha. the first time I heard Funkadelic, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You know, like okay, we got to start doing this. Like we got we got to <laughs> add this. And some people wouldn't get down with it, you know. And so, but then as you as I got older, I learned how to put all of that into the style that I was doing. Like That's there's awesome. a song on a Moss Generator record called "Enter the Fire." Okay. And I take the baseline, a Temptations baseline, and pretty much, and I steal from. Um, B-52s, uh, Planet Claire, and and a Pretender's tune. And so no one would ever know. To, you, you, I mean, you can notice it, but when you're doing that and you and you and you get oh, you get uh, more mature as a songwriter, mm -hmm. you learn how to interweave those things into your writing and they don't become obvious. Look into the heart of the loner It's rotten with envy and greed So take what you have, make a choice, good or bad There's a lot you can learn from deceit Enter the fire
Spontaneous Combustions was a record that were recorded in about five hours. Oh, we wow. wrote it and recorded it. It's all it is is free forming. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, so we set up in this. I had a rental house that I was fixing up to rent again, and we just set up in there and recorded live and right off the I got this riff let's jam it and then solos and you know whatever might happen we just go through the motions so that was something that was in it we like to do experimental things like we did a hardcore album Ooh. that sounds totally like you know discharge or black flag or whatever and of songs I wrote when I was a teenager so and then we did like a, a psychedelic record where we played in a um in an airplane hangar we played live oh wow and we brought like I have, I have a couple of mellotrons like the old m400 mellotrons and we we added extra members that play like electric piano and guitar oh, very and, cool you know gongs and so we, we we try to change our we try to do records that maybe aren't our, our main records but there are side records that come out on different labels oh, that cool. have a different sound so um but spontaneous combustions was definitely in one of those where it was something weird it was something different for us that we hadn't done. It reminded me of like a mix of Black Sabbath meets King Crimson. And I thought that was amazing because cool. it's like the free form side of it. That's where I definitely heard the free form. Okay. Yeah. Those awesome. are, two, those are, those two bands are in my top four favorite. They're artists perfect. Of all time. <laughs> I so, saw, I saw, yeah. I saw KC, I saw King Crimson live recently on their last tour in America, supposedly, but I know Fripp, I think they said they were done, but I'm not sure. That's how they all, you know, all bands do that. Uh, but uh, they, they are getting up there, but I love them. Uh, but uh, Fripp's coming yeah. around on a solo tour and he's hitting Connecticut. And I'm like, I'm really tempted because it's going to be something interesting just to kind of yeah, hear it's him. A, it's always wild with him. Yeah, you know? it's something like you don't know what you're getting. That's the that's what makes it so interesting. It's like, oh, geez. Yeah, they were the, one of the most, especially the the Bruford, Wetton, Cross, yes. Fripp era from the 70s. Oh. It's the most ferocious live band of all time. Nobody touches them. If, if you listen to even even USA, which like I bought all those King yeah. Crimson box sets that chronicle all the tours. <laughs> so it's like you know it's twenty five, twenty six discs a box set. And I yeah, got five of them. Oh jeez. <laughs> um, and so you know every night it's going to be different. So even if you listen to just USA, you hear how powerful they were. That's awesome. Yeah, I you love know. I anyway. love Ash, uh, Asbury Park, the Jam. I love. All of that stuff. Um, I enjoy. Uh, I really enjoyed Red. Red is my all-time favorite album, and that's a, it's an amazing. Record. Do you have the box set we for covered, that one? We covered that. Oh, um, that's awesome. On a seven, it was actually a Mahavishnu Orchestra King Crimson medley.
the one my favorite song of yours, and I've played it on the show before as well, and a couple episodes back, uh, probably in my first couple seasons or something like that. But I have played it. Uh, Wizards of the Prophecy Pen. What is that song about? It's about science fiction writers. Ooh. So, um, and it, it, it references Rod Serling. Okay. Actually, it says Minions of Serling. Um, so, like, it's about you know, that's all it's about. Just awesome. I, I'm a big science fiction fan. Me too. And, uh, As I mentioned, War of the Worlds before. Yeah. So it's you, yeah. you probably and, like, and yeah. you mentioned Twilight Zone, <laughs> yes. which is yes. which is the greatest one of the greatest oh, yeah. television shows of all time. Um, and his work even on Planet of the Apes, like the first mm-hmm. Planet of the Apes movie. That ending is so Sterling. This it it, you can't even. It's it's the greatest moment in 60s cinema history, I believe. It's crazy because but, it's just uh, like a big flippy floppy, you know? <laughs> but for better words, yeah, it's a it's, big it's, flippy it's floppy. It's fully a giant <laughs> Twilight Zone episode. Yes. So, um, anyway, so yeah, that's that song is about sci-fi writers. a song uh, okay. from your album Shadowlands from Mosh Generators uh, Shadowlands mm-hmm. uh, Drowning in Your Loving Cup tell me about that one 
Um, it's probably the most straight ahead rock song. It kind of, it's the closer to the earlier Moss. Um, and, and right now, because it's, I think we've played it live a few times. It wasn't a heavy rotation. Mm -hmm. um, but it has that pop element um, that I like uh, about music. I think all, I can't write music without some kind of hooky elements to it, you know, or at least gotcha. try. And uh, that's that's that one on the album. It's just more of a straight ahead rocker. You know, it's got less prog. We get pretty prog on Shadowlands sometimes. <laughs> into strangest times tell me about that one that was uh was an opener for our live sets for at least the abyssinia tour I, we still play it first a lot of times ah, it's cool. just, it comes right in the whole band is in within like plat plat planet like it's literally like two seconds and everybody's going vocals and all so it's a good surprise that you know it comes in good for first it's the it's on our Abyssinia record from okay. 2016. It's it's a good it's a just a, it's another kind of straight ahead rocker with some little twisty turns. It's not as easy to see. I'm going crazy.
Um, we're going to end the show with uh, another Mosh Generator song, uh, which is Shadowlands. Uh, tell me about that one, and then we'll uh, you know we'll say our goodbyes, and we'll get this show out for you, Tony. Thank you so much. But tell me about this one. You, you bet. Uh, Shadowlands is the title track to the last full-length Moss record that came out in 2018. Um, it's it's possibly, it's up there in my top three favorite awesome. Moss songs, mostly because it came out like I hear it in my head. It's rare that things sound like sound like they should like the way i hear them in my head that they actually come out that way and it then it it's a nice gateway into the direction that i like the band to go which is a less heavy riffing and more uh progressive kind of it it, it has tonight it has nice movement in it sweet so um yeah yeah, we'll play that one here for you. And I wanted to ask one more question for you, and then we'll end today's show. And thank you so much again. Uh, plans for the future. What do, what do we got going on from Tony Reed? Other, I know you who just uh, said uh, you have some albums coming out as well, but what do we got? Yep. You got a new Moss record that I'm mastering at this point. Like, right, to, I was just stopped that to do, and I was doing the artwork Sweet. layout. And then I have a new hot spring water the third album we started tracking the drums so we're kind of going around working on that and then i'm in the, the other band with uh big scenic nowhere is also making a record and, and doing some some touring plans we just we just lost an australian tour so we're going to try to make up for that but uh um so that's my plan and i'm, I'm going to australia anyway i, I produce oh, cool. a band over there that fly me over to go produce them so that's really nice. Oh, so Tony's nice. very prolific, yeah. I take it. And that is awesome. Yes, I, uh, very much look up to that. Very cool. <laughs>
tuned into Mad Wasp Radio, so don't forget where you are. Don't change that dial, you don't need to. 